Hey, what's up guys? Venison Deers here and I'm doing a CGC return. Um, I actually recorded this video already, but the lighting was pretty uh, pretty garbage. So I just said to redo it while like just better lighting so you can see the cards better. Um, so I already know the grades on these cards and I already have them like scanned and sleeved and like uh, protectors, but I still thought it'd be a cool submission to just go over. And the first pile we're gonna do is probably just gonna be some EX cards. Uh, uh, this standard was from August 24th. August 24th, and it was returned to me, well, shipped back October 1st. So you do the math, like a little over a month to get a standard back. Um, 14 cards, not too bad. First one is going to be a, a Rocket Scyther EX CGC8. Uh, this one kind of shocked me. Uh, just because like the subgrades you see are really like really strong eight five centering is whatever but nine corners nine edges they dinged it on surface grade i'm sorry if you hear police cars like there's nothing i can do first it was airplanes then it's police cars then you'll probably hear ambulance later um but they got docked on sent uh surface i'm just assuming because of like how these cards are with that full body hollow um they picked up scratches just over the like over the years since it's been out I mean, the Rocket Gang Strikes Back is, is honestly really old. I think I think Team Rocket in Japanese is from 97. This is from 2004. Uh, and then, you know, the Strikes Back set is from 2004. So even then, this is like a 17-year-old card uh, at this point. It's another really mint one. Rocket Suikuni X. Um, I think the Scyther was like 40 bucks raw. The Suikun was around 60. I think it was 60 sold as near mint plus. Um, just, you know, pretty self-explanatory, just eights on surface, uh, eights on surface and edges. And, uh, I guess this is like a little something to know if you get cards back from CGC. Uh, you see how it says I have two eight subgrades and two nine subgrades. I was informed by a friend today that how CGC does it is if the, if there are two sub, like two low subgrades, they're the same, that's the grade. So if it was nine corners, nine, uh, centering, but it got uh, seven on surface, seven on edges. According to him, it, it, I think this is true. It's not going to be brought to uh, like an eight because I just assumed they would bring it to the middle. If you have like, because this this to me makes a lot of sense as an eight five. Um, but according to how CGC does it, it's just a seven. You know, even though you have two strong subgrades, but you still have two low subgrades at the same level, you just get you default to the lower subgrade. Rockets Mewtwo EX. Uh, this is just a really nice card. One of my favorite EXs uh, by Arita. So this one, I was just hesitant to send in initially because you can just see how off-center it is. Um, it, like obviously just left to right, it's it's super shifted. You can see that. But it's cool. You get to see more of the, the hollow forward border. Um, and like my, my, my fears were correct because centering ended up getting an eight on this. Uh, but to be fair, the surface also got eight. Um, and it's probably similar to these two. Like these are all just, I bought these cause they're, I, I see the pictures, they look minty to me. Like no, no real edge wear, no real uh, corner damage. And like obviously I can assess centering. But the thing with a lot of these cards is uh, that surface grade is super hard to tell from scans, from photos, because there's just all this hollow foil on the card. And I'm guessing this card has uh, just got scratches on it. But still like <laughs> those are high, like relatively high grades considering what the cards are. And then this one, I bought this with the Suicune, uh, same seller. It looked really mint to me. It, it's an Entei, but it got a 6.5. And uh, the other subgrades are fairly strong. Edges were a little rough. Maybe, this is not like a plug, but I do have this listed, I believe, on my site. Uh, just if you want to see scans. But yeah, I, I'm only saying that because I can't really see why they gave it that that rough seven five on edges because to me seven five on edges you should see you know visible widening in multiple spots um i just don't see that on this card but that surface grade at first when i first got the, like when i first unboxed this i thought they were really tough on it because i couldn't see on the scan as well uh, what the issue was but oh I, I yeah i found it right here when i got it back i inspected it oh my god what the hell why are there birds outside all right, Damn. I might have to take this out of the case. Let me just take this out of the plastic so you can see. I do also recommend everyone uh, get plastic, these like nice little plastic sleeves for their slabs. 
I know a lot of people do it already, but like maybe if you're just new to collecting graded cards, um, it's just a huge improvement. You can kind of see it right there under the poke. Like, I don't know what this is. This psychic energy. Underneath the psychic energy, there was like this dot of dirt. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to hold it right there. Yeah, yeah. So you see under the psychic energy, there's a like a splotch of almost looks like a either a dirt mark or oil. Um, and then right there, you see there's a couple more spots right along that border. But just looking at it like this, and at, when I saw it, I felt I felt like an idiot. I felt so dumb because I think that stuff is all removable. That all looks like surface level. And I think if you got like a microfiber cloth, you could buff that out super easy. A little bit of water, microfiber. And if you did that, I think you would at least get a 6.5 on surface, maybe a 7 on surface. So you're looking at like a, a two gray bump at minimum if you were to clean this card up. Um, and that might be something I end up revisiting. I haven't cracked the CGC card in months. Maybe, like, maybe coming up in a year was the last time I had to crack the card out. Uh, but yeah, it, that's that's 100% just stupid of me to not notice. Uh, but you know, it, also on the flip side, I'm if I sell that as is and someone wants to go through the effort of cleaning it themselves, um, they get pretty good value for the cost of that card. Here's a cool one. This is Pikachu 102 DPP. This is a 10th anniversary Pokemon Center opening promo. Got a CGC 5. Um, this card I had purchased really because of the rarity of it. Uh, 10th anniversary promos, they were released at various Pokemon centers in Japan. Uh, the idea was you just go and you buy, you purchase products from them and you get the promo. The other ones are fairly common, but they're still very pricey. Uh, just because it's, a, you know, it, obviously it's an old promo. It's Pikachu of all things. The clay style is popular. But this one from, I believe it's pronounced Fukao, Fukuoka, Fukuoka. Um, this is the rarest of the, I think it's five, the rarest of the set. Uh, and I, I've seen speculation. I read it, a lot of it on E4, Elite Form, great place if you don't use it. Um, that there was a combination of two things. The population of the city is a lot, skews a lot older. Um, and just because of that, not as many people were interested in the Pokemon TCG. And it's also just a smaller city compared to some place like Tokyo. Uh, so there's just, there weren't as many of these handed out. And for that reason, uh, they just ended up being quite rare. But it's a cool promo. Another pretty cool promo we got back, the Daisuke Pokemon Fan Club. This is the beginner class, uh, beginner class promo, but just absolutely classic art. This, this one kind of spiked because uh, there was like that, I think it was like over $1,000 for a 10 in this card. Um, which just brought a lot of eyes to it. Uh, this card is in English, I believe, uh, as like a set card, which is really cool. Um, really nice artwork. Uh, you have fan favorites on the artwork itself. You have Meowth, Mew Pikachu, but uh, a friend of mine, Swami, uh, I always thought this was so funny when he did like a video showing off this card, but I agree with him. My favorite part of the, the card is that kid in the background, that little guy. The, little, the girls are all talking about like their favorite Pokemon and whatnot or whatever. But then the kid in the background got the biggest grin on his face and he's just running with a Weedle and a coughing uh, to take on like whatever the challenge comes. There's a cool card. Uh, I So same thing that I mentioned with these EXs, like I said before, you can tell surf, you can kind of tell edges, corners. That stuff is pretty visible. Surface is so tough to tell. Um, and I thought this card was also really unfair because I, I didn't know, I didn't notice anything wrong with it before I sent it. Uh, before sent it in because obviously 7.5 is not really worth sending standard um but i think i there was an issue i'm trying to see if it was on the side of the top there was like a small dent in the card oh yeah, yeah okay so i'm gonna hold it in the light try to finesse it a bit you can see right along that n oh, it's so tough to see right along the n I could hold it like that. You should be able to see it. Slight indentation, very slight. It, it it does break through the front though. That's the the bigger issue. So you can see it on the plus or minimum head that it kind of breaks through. It's really faint, to be fair. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it exactly like that to describe it. Just super slight break. Probably just some pressure was left on it, uh, left in that area for too long. I mean, cause the indentation or like something had fallen on it. That could have been like a, it looks like almost like the edge of a scissor. 
on the edge of maybe a pen or something, just press down onto the area. So to me, that's pretty deserving of a 6.5 surface, just because that is obviously somewhere to the surface of the card. Next up is Dark Blast Toys from Web Series. Uh, I speak about this set a lot. I really do like Web Series just because um, it, it's manageable to collect. It's not a super large set, only 48 cards. But what it does, you know, what, what's nice about it is it's fairly rare. So there is a little bit of chase to it. And the arts are nice. Uh, they reprint arts from all these different sets to incorporate. Uh, like, this is like a, a weird point to make too. But I'm pretty sure Web Series is the only set that has all three starters as their dark form. Because um, obviously in Team Rocket, you got Dark Blastoise, Dark Charizard. But not in, uh, but not Dark Venusaur. That came out as a promo. In Web Series, you can collect them all. You can also, the, the magic card from this set is the Unicarp artwork. Um, which is also a popular one. Surfing Pikachu's in this set. You, you have a lot of good cheese cards in web series. Um, and they just present nicely with that e-reader border. Really cool though. That swirl right next to him. Eight on a card of this age and of of this standard. Of like the, of this of this value, I should say. Um, I, I'd say eight is a really solid grade. I mean, I mean, I mostly got eight to this submission. So uh, I'll be happy to take that. A really cool card. So I got the eight in the Dark Blast toys. I also ended up getting an 8 in the Dark Charizard. You know this card from Team Rocket. So uh, I think it's Rocket Gang in Japanese. Really cool. These are uh, unlimited. So, like, you do know that, like, first edition of a lot of these Japanese sets are lower print. Uh, or, or, sorry, first edition of a lot of these Japanese sets are more common because they just printed a lot of first edition at first. And then, like, retroactively, they would come back and say, print unlimited if there was demand to justify it that's not to say um, first edition is worth more uh just because it's like one of those things where people want the stamp it actually reminds me a lot of comic books how uh there's some books that get second third printings in lower amounts a lot of the time um than the first printings but the first printing just commands more value uh yeah that's just the way i see it because people like saying they have the first edition they have the first print run of something dark charizard and eight I mean, I'm really happy with this. I paid around 300 for both of these hollows, uh, plus like the starter lines for both of them and some other stuff from Akari. Next up, we have a fan favorite, Mew Gold Star, CGC 4.5, really good mid-grade. This one, um, to be honest, I thought this one would get closer to a 5.5.5, five just looking at the back. Because I, I had a CGC 5 in this card that looked pretty similar to this. Uh, but I, I realized, again, uh, retroactively what the issue was. The bigger issue was, you can see right there, this creasing. Uh, like, the card of the self was creased. I'm not sure how that happens. Uh, like, I really just have no clue how that happens on these cards. But really, I think, like, I think creasing really hurts your grades. Uh, the surface level grades. More beat-up gold stars. Flaring on gold star, world championship pack. Um, Obviously... Not obviously, but you can probably see it's the unlimited version. This is the rarer of uh, this, the print runs, just because uh, this. I don't, to my knowledge, this set wasn't too popular. Uh, so first edition, like for the set wasn't too popular, so not many people were interested in the second print run of it, the unlimited run. And along with uh, along with not being popular, it wasn't very readily available to order. So it just means that there's very few of these out there. As I mentioned, uh, with my BGS copies. Those are the only ones that have ever been graded by BGS. And CGC, there's quite there's a couple of CGC ones, but I'm guessing CGC PSA, you combine the population graded for both. You're looking at probably less than, I'm going to say less than 20 of, of the three evolutions graded uh, by those companies. And then along with the Flareon, we have a Vaporeon. And these are this one was like super interesting too. Like I got all these gold stars all at the same time. I've been, I was searching for, like, I, I periodically search for EV Lucians, like EV related cards on the Japanese sites, but I never saw them pop up. Like, they don't pop up too often if they do, it's the first edition. But then for some reason, like, out of nowhere, all the cards got listed. Like, I think it was like six or seven different unlimited gold stars got listed at the same time. And it's just like one of those things that, that's just how this market goes. Like, sometimes, I want to buy one card. I don't see it for a long time. And then all of a sudden, a bunch get listed. And it's the same thing with like, on my end sales. I'll have slow periods every now and then. 
a couple days, very slow, not many stuff, not much stuff moving. And all of a sudden, one day, five, six items will sell. Uh, it just, that's just how it goes. It's, it's weird how like the world works like that. Markets work like that. Sorry for the rent, but next up is Lugia Gold, uh, sorry, not Lugia Gold Star, just Lugia Hollow. This is gold, silver to a new world. Uh, this is the Japanese version of Neo Genesis. Really nice artwork. Hollow is beautiful. Uh, I do want to note too, you see how it has a full hollow bleed on it. Uh, that's so common in Japanese old back. So I, I mentioned that because in case you ever see this type of card, like a base set Venusaur Blastoise with a full body hollow, uh, don't pay extra for it. It's more common that you're going to find it with that full body, uh, that full hollow bleed. And next up, uh, second to last is this Blastoise EX uh, from XY Evolutions. You see it's noted as an error card because it's a minor miscut to CGC, which makes sense. I'm not arguing with that. A miscut to them, like a super miscut is like a diagonal, something that like completely breaks card, but minor just means it's they made a mistake. Um, and it's like a fat border. But this, you see that white dot, that's the printer alignment dot. That's where the printer is supposed to cut the card. And then, uh, yeah, just really cool. And with these types of ultra rares, I like it so you see the border. So that's the last one from there. But then the one that I have to send back, I'm a little disappointed about, is this Play Mew 013 Play. This is called like Window Mew by some people. Uh, really nice artwork though. Mew hanging on the window. This one has a swirl. But you'll see nine centering, nine surface, and eight five corners, seven edges. I believe this would be around a seven five to eight um, if the subgrades were correct. Uh, if the grid was correct, but somehow this got sent to uh, six. Um, obviously, this was a mistake on CGC's part when they did it. The quality control didn't catch that. Uh, but on my end, that means I now have to send it in for a reholder and probably wait around a month to get the card fixed and sent back. But yeah, that was that was the submission. Um, I'm sorry if this felt a little long for the amount of cards I got, but I hope you enjoyed it. And as I mentioned, if you're interested in anything, IsleCollectibles.com is now live. The link will be on the screen. Uh, right now and feel free to check it out and yeah, thanks for watching